We have a corona hole that's in the Earth strike zone right now and one more that's on its way. And the only bright region on the Earth facing disk is dimming. What does this mean for radio communications? Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week gets a little bit of a boost. We have a corona hole that's rotated into the Earth strike zone and it has sent us some fast wind that bumped us up to active conditions for a very short while, but it's not yet over because we have another coronal hole here that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone in about three days or so, and that's going to be sending us yet another burst of fast wind that could once again bump us up to active conditions, maybe even storm conditions at high latitudes. So you are Aurora photographers who've managed to catch just a tiny bit of aurora, we're probably going to get a little bit more for you, so keep on your toes. Now you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, we have a single bright region on the earth-facing disk right now, but it is dimming. We've already dropped to poor conditions for radio propagation, and unfortunately there is no reprieve in sight. Once this region rotates off to the back side of the sun, we don't see any bright regions, even in stereo's view, which means we're going to probably be sitting at poor conditions for radio propagation, maybe as long as two weeks. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have a corona hole that is rotated into the Earth strike zone right now, and it has been sending us some small bursts of fast wind. This has actually bumped us up to active conditions for a short bit, but things are a little bit quieter right now. But it may not be completely over, especially at high latitudes. NOAA is expecting over the next day or so to have more active conditions with about a 25% chance of a minor storm. At mid latitudes, most likely the activity is pretty much over. We're only expecting unsettled conditions with about a 15% chance of, act of active conditions. And then things should settle down as we wait for the next corona hole to rotate into the Earth strike zone. And that should bump up the activity again. At high latitudes near the end of the week, we're expecting active conditions with about a 30% chance of a minor storm. At mid latitudes, only about a 25% chance of active conditions. So most likely it will remain settled with things beginning to kind of quiet down as we approach the weekend. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, even though there is a bright region on the Earth-facing sun right now, the sun is still considered spotless. And as such, we have no risk for any big flares or radio blackouts, which is good news for you GPS users. However, the solar flux has definitely taken a hit. We are now back into the poor realm for radio propagation. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, it looks like CW is going to be back in vogue easily over the next week, possibly two weeks before we see any reprieve. Now, as far as the radiation storms are concerned, we are at solar minimum, and this does mean that we have a boost in the cosmic ray penetration especially at high latitudes and high altitudes. So you frequent flyers who are flying upwards of 800 hours annually. This includes pilots and air crew, as well as high-risk passengers. Please understand you are in the marginal range for radiation dose and take these considerations into your flight plans. So the space weather this week is getting a little bit of a boost. We have a coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth strike zone now, and it has bumped us up to active conditions and even given us a little bit of aurora show here and there. But the show's not over. In a few days, we're going to have another coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone, and it promises to send us a little bump of fast wind as well and could give us some more aurora show. So you aurora photographers, I know it's solar minimum and shows are hard to come by, so I'm going to be rooting for you. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the only bright region on the sun right now is dimming. And what's worse is it's going to be rotating off of the sun's west limb here in the next couple days. We've already kind of dropped into the high level of poor radio propagation conditions, and the numbers are going to continue to tank as we get closer to the weekend. And then after that, uh, I hate to say it, but there's nothing, no bright regions, nothing, not even in stereo's view. So these poor conditions might easily continue over the next two weeks before we get a reprieve. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of the investigators, scientists, and engineers who have dedicated a very large portion of their lives to bringing the Parker Solar Probe to life 
and making it successful launch a reality. This has been a long time coming, as NASA has in one way or another been flirting with the solar probe mission since the 1960s. And finally, our technology has caught up with our tenacity. I can't think of a better way to usher in a new era of space weather science, research, and forecasting than with a mission named after one of the founding fathers of our field and a probe to touch the sun. This is a very exciting time, and I'm so pleased to be able to share it with you. Congratulations.